Danslegende Louise Le Cavalier komt naar Schietmacher en zal met haar 64 jaar zelf op toneel te zien zijn in haar voorstelling Stations. En dat is echt een bijzonderheid. Louise Le Cavalier was het gespierde boegbeeld in de jaren 80 en jaren 90 van de Canadese groep La 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 Human Steps. En ze maakte die groep wereldberoemd doordat zij met haar gespierde lijf vanuit stilstand zich als een tornado met een horizontale schroef in de armen van haar danspartners kon werpen. En ze werd daarom ook wel Flemon Lex genoemd, kamikaze, wervelwind, raket, mini Lewin. Noem het maar, uh, Louise Le Cavalier had dat uiterlijk met de geblondeerde haren en had een enorme atletisch vermogen in haar lijf. Minstens zo beroemd werd, werd ze toen ze door David Bowie werd gevraagd om te dansen in zijn concerttour uh, in uh, 1990 en om een videoclip met hem te maken. En daar deed ze eigenlijk hetzelfde met David Bowie, die wierp ze gewoon dwars over haar gespierde bovenarmen. In 1999 stopte ze bij La 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 Human Steps omdat ze een blessure kreeg aan haar heup. Niet vanwege die kamikaze acties, maar omdat er een fout was gemaakt bij een chiropractische behandeling. Ze ging naar Parijs, kreeg een nieuwe heup, een meisjestweeling en ontdekte daar dat ze zelf eigenlijk ook een drang had om te creëren en om te choreograferen en ook een talent. En inmiddels is ze een aantal decennia verder en heeft ze in 2006 haar eigen gezelschap opgericht, Fou. Glorieux. En nu maakt ze haar eigen voorstellingen en staat ze dus in Stations op toneel. Stations dat ze beschrijft als een uur lang vier verschillende fases doorgaan. En die noemt ze vloeibaar, beheerst, meditatief, obsessief. En eigenlijk zijn het allemaal fases waarin ze laat zien hoe superieur haar lichaamsbeheersing nog steeds is. En hoe haar lichaam nog echt alle kanten op kan buigen... Al is dat vliegen wat ze vroeger deed nu veranderd in landen op de grond. En haalt ze natuurlijk niet meer zo'n kamikaze acties uit als toen. Maar dan laat ze eigenlijk veel meer de toeschouwer ook uh, naar binnen kijken en met haar bewegingen mee ademen. Licht is het enige decor, uh, haar enige tegenstander zou je eigenlijk kunnen zeggen. En een uur lang staat ze zelf op het podium. We spraken Louise Le Cavalier over haar werk, over hoe ze dat doet om met 64 jaar nog op het toneel te staan en over die voorstelling Stations. Uh, let's go back for a moment to the 80s and the 90s. Your famous performances with La 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 Human Steps. You did incredible actions like your horizontal twist flips. Did it, of did it feel so dangerous as it looked like for the audience? No, it didn't feel so dangerous. It felt exciting and um, um, yeah, it felt exciting, but not dangerous because we were rehearsing a lot. I think we spent our lives in the studio and we are all really connected together and we love the work to evolve and um, to dare and push each other uh, to, to bring more complexity in the movement and more edge in the movement. Um, so we kind of really liked that. It was a game and it didn't feel dangerous at all. Uh, th this kind of movement was already invented, I, I think, but we played with it to perform it in, in different ways and it became more uh, angular and we played in different ways to attack the movement and to get out of the movement because normally in ballet, they did kind of movements like that. Uh, the men especially were doing those, but they were very uh, upright, done more upright and certainly with beauty and everything, but we didn't try to copy that. Uh, we just explored in the studio, but it was one movement amongst lots of other movements, complexity of choreography, uh, uh, of rapport in between the partners that were really exciting also. So these jumps, they became very famous for the public watching, but for us, the, the jumps were just one movement amongst, in a phrase of movement. And you also performed with David Bowie, how was that? It's beautiful because this question comes over and over and over. And I really will never get tired of it, but I never can answer it well enough because it's a human experience that it's really hard to share in a few words. But maybe with time, because I answer it a few times, uh, I think what stays of this for me is how I liked him. Uh, more than the experience of a big star, uh, Maybe I had this moment the first time I saw him uh, because he's 
he was extremely charismatic. And also I, I saw him just backstage before performance. So he was all ready to go on stage. So it's very imp impressive in a way. But after that, I kind of really liked the person. And that's, I think I liked him right away. It was a shock for me to discover somebody that was so well known, but in the first moment of interaction, there was also this thing like, mm, yeah, impressed, but also uh, like he was my kin in a way. Uh, kin, like close, like brother or uh, brother in arts, brother in life in, in sort of a uh, particular way. And I heard you did a secret rehearsal in Amsterdam with David Bowie. Yes, yes. Uh, we were performing in the evening. That's true. It was in Amsterdam. Uh, it's the first time we really worked together. Uh, and we rehearsed in the little studio. We were playing in the Stadt Schaubuch. And I think uh, during the afternoons, I was rehearsing with him or learning some choreography with him because we were performing in London right after at the uh, a benefit for the ICA, Institute of, Con of Contemporary Arts. And there was a whole evening of musicians uh, yeah, it was the 10th anniversary, so many musicians were performing for free there, and David was there also uh, closing the evening, and that's how we first collaborated. Uh, he was performing a Look Back in Anger, and in the introduction, there was two minutes where he didn't sing or play guitar or something, so we danced together two minutes before my part partner joined me, and we continued with the duet. Then you got a hip replacement, and you got a girl twins. They are now 22, I guess, the, the, your girl twins? Uh, 21, yeah. 21? Yeah. And you started your own group in 2006, Fou Glorieux. Yes. Uh, can you describe the difference between uh, the performer you are now and the performer that you was in the 18th and the 19th that they mentioned, Flame on Legs, and now we see a, another Louise on stage, but still you are on stage. I didn't change so much. I... It's sad to say, but or maybe good also, I don't know, because we want to change and evolve, but the, the, the deep essence of who we are, we cannot really change that. Um, so I think I'm still the performer that I was, but maybe, I, yes, I don't do those jumps. And what is the main difference, I think, now is that I work with smaller groups. But recently, I just did a new project uh, with a, a visual artist named Lu Yang from, from China, and I just did this a few weeks ago, and it was in a more raw environment, uh, people standing around the stage, big lights, uh, no sophistication of uh, the decor, except just if, yeah, the, the avatars and the characters that I animated. And this reminded me really very much of how I was, how I was performing with La La La. And I thought it's still totally in me, and I, I really still enjoy it a lot. So it's strange. And you're performing now your solo stations in Schriedmacher. Yes. Um, yeah. What are stations about? Uh, station was uh, the continuity, as I said, of the, the, the reading and the performing for a, a theater group of the, a book of this woman called Marguerite Poretti that sent me into some kind of introspection. So, and, it, and the choreography that I created for that was, I thought was interesting. And I thought I had to dig di uh, deeper into it. So that's how I went into station. So it was a bit, uh, hmm. maybe the first part that I created was very different from what we know of how I dance or even what I know of how I dance. Uh, but then continuing the work in the studio, uh, other parts uh, appeared and I wanted to develop other type of movements. And then that's how I, I decided to, to call it stations. Like, like I can't decide myself to just be going into one direction. It's like, uh, I like many directions. And in the station, there are many parts, five, four parts. You are now 64. Oh. But did you, <laughs> did you ever experience uh, age discrimination in dance? No, not at all. Because I work alone and I, I hire the people to work with me. So <laughs> they won't say anything if they think something. If they want to work with me, they have to accept that I'm that age. Uh, it's the most dangerous thing is to have discrimination myself against my age or something like this. But uh, once I'm in the studio performing, I mean, I don't have this kind of thought because 
my body is still available in the, and I'm still curious and I'm still, I like, I like to search. So I search with what I have, but not to say that I have so much less than what I had before, because, you know, we, well, maybe some dancers are magnificent at 20 and they are perfect and they just get less perfect with time. But I never considered that I was perfect. And what do you hope to show to new audience uh, with stations? Maybe audience that don't know you from the past. I, I like to develop new audience. I would like to, because I think that the, the dance I do is uh, particular uh, and different from most of the things I see. And I think it's good to have a variety of approach for the people, the younger people that get for when it's new for them to get acquainted to dance. It's great if they see the best younger dancers of these times, but it's good also to see other uh, point of views or other sensibilities. I hope that my dance also gets close to other people, available for other people. Louisa, we are looking forward to stations in Schrittmacher. It's a really great performance and we're looking forward to seeing you on stage. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you too. Mm -hmm.